Oh, good evening all. Uh, I wish to welcome everyone to the October meeting of Health and Building Committee. Standing committees are held as part of the council meeting process in order for committees to consider reports prepared by council officers and to make recommendations regarding those reports to the monthly council meeting. Council delegates on Health and Building Committee, uh, Mayor Kennedy, Deputy Mayor Hickey, Councillor Chandler, Councillor Jewett, Councillor Gallagher and Councillor Turley. Uh, statement of ethical obligations. All councillors undertook an oath of affirmation at the beginning of their term of office and declared to undertake the duties of the office of the councillor in the best interest of the people of Broken Hill local government area and the city of Broken Hill. And they will faithfully and impartially carry out the functions, powers, authorities and discretions vested in them under the Local Government Act 1993 or any other act to the best of their ability and judgment. Live streaming and recording of the meeting. This committee meeting is being live streamed via YouTube, recorded and published online via council website. To those present in the meeting today, by attending this public meeting, you're consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded and published. Chairperson and or general manager have the authority to pause the live stream if comments or debate are considered defamatory or otherwise inappropriate for publishing. Participants advise they may be subject to legal action if they engage in unlawful behavior or commentary. Are there any apologies for this evening? Yeah. Councillor Chandler's apology. Um, no other apologies. Can I have a move for Councillor Chandler's? Thanks, Councillor Gallagher. Second, yeah, no. Councillor Jewett. Thank you. Uh, all in favour of that? Thank you. Passed unanimous. Uh, leave of absence application. Councillor Turley has submitted a leave of absence application to provide the reason being personal reasons. Uh, is there any other leave of absence? I haven't got anything else in writing. No. Um, have a move of that, please. Move that way. Move that way. Thanks, Councillor. Gallagher. Seconded, Councillor uh, Mayor Kennedy. Uh, all in favour? Pass unanimously. Thank you. Uh, can I call on Councillor Jewett to read the prayer? Please. Thank you. Almighty God, we ask you to invoke your blessing upon this council, direct and prosper our deliberations to the advancement and true welfare of the people of the council area, our state and Australia. Amen. And uh, uh, Mayor Kennedy, would you read the acknowledgement of country? I oh, know the uh, minors. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. You can read it there. Dude. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet the Winnicarley people and pay our respect to those elders past, present and emerging. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. And uh, Mayor Kennedy, you read the other one. Thank you, yes. We take the time to reflect, remember and honour the over 800 miners that lost their lives and those that were crippled or maimed on the line of load. We thank the brave miners and their wives who were part of the 1919-20 strike that lasted over 500 days and delivered a 35-hour week, working week. Mining is our past and our future. Thank you, Mayor Kennedy. Uh, through to the minutes of... The last meeting that the Minister of the Health and Building Committee meeting of held September 2022 be confirmed. Do you have a move for that? I'll move that way. Thanks, Councillor Gallagher. Second. Councillor Jewett, thank you. Uh, did you want to speak on those, Councillor Gallagher? No, thank you. Good. Councillor Jewett, no. Uh, all in favour of those minutes being passed? Confirmed. Uh, any disclosures of interest tonight's meeting? No disclosures. Thank you. Uh, the reports, report number one, Broken Hill City Council, report number 22, 227-22, date October 7th, 2022. Correspondence report, lead prevention programs and blood lead level testing in Broken Hill. Uh, do we have a move of that? Uh, I'll that move. No. Sorry, Dan. Thanks. Go. I'll Thanks, second it. You are, you're second yep. it. Councillor Gallagher, you've moved it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, did you want to speak on that? No, I okay. didn't. All good. Well, I'll just uh, briefly speak. Again, uh, it's a little bit dismissive in the response. You know, yes, we do get $13 million. It doesn't help. Uh, we aren't held to the same level as the rest of the state, as was explained uh, when we are given a presentation in Sydney when there was 500 parts per million near a railway tract. Uh, the state went into virtually went into lockdown. Uh, they also uh, remediate a lot of areas around Sydney that 
uh, parts per million are only uh, just over the safe levels here in Broken Hill. Uh, we get up to over 2,000 parts plus and, it, and we're ignored. We get $13 million. It doesn't, doesn't even over a five-year period, it doesn't, doesn't go close uh, to doing what is required to give us the same rights as the rest of the state, the rest of the country, and now the rest of the world. We paid out what would be the equivalent of billions and billions of dollars in royalties over that period. And our, our community needs to be protected just like any other community. Uh, and so I'd, if uh, Councillor Gallagher would accept it, um, we need to write back explaining exactly what was said. We expect, we're expected, we expect Broken Hill to be held to the same standard as the rest of the state and the country when it comes to lead protection. Have you got that, Councillor Gallagher? Are you happy with that? Look, I'm more than happy with that, and I echo the comments of the mayor. Uh, look, I don't. We haven't been doing this because, um, uh, you know, it, but it is an election year, and I think that we probably should also send the similar correspondence to uh, the shadow ministry yep. because uh, we need to get a commitment from. If the government and the coalition are not going to give us a commitment, then perhaps we need to get a commitment from the opposition. Happy to add that, Councillor Gallagher? More than happy. Thanks, Councillor Gallagher. All in favour of that? Passed unanimously. Thank you. Item two, Broken Hill City Council, report number 228-22, dated September 14, 2022, Green Space at Creedon Street. Uh, do we have a mover for that motion? Happy Mayor Kendi, thank you. Seconder, Councillor Gallagher. I'm speaking on that, Mayor Kendi. Oh, look, I think this is uh, this will be a real winner um, for Broken Hill Council, the community, uh, and the Aboriginal communities that live around that area, but also within Broken Hill. Uh, this is an opportunity for uh, the council to deliver to the community as a whole, but potentially also uh, use this as part of uh, an ongoing um ongoing plan that uh could could come up with a a good compromise for the native title um held over other crown land yeah. thanks mayor kennedy Councilor Gallagher. Yeah. no i'm quite happy with the uh, comments of uh, mayor kennedy and just say it's a you know, it, it is a it is a step forward it is something that's going to be good for the the city it's going to be good for the uh, aboriginal community and the general community around that area to use that that space and i think it's um magnificent that we're doing this yes council brown yeah um yeah just a just a thought uh it was mentioned somewhere in the report uh i think from from crown the the notes from crown lands or the the consultant um that there is a there's there's a great need at the moment and it's i mean it's obvious there's a need for housing not just here but everywhere in the country um and particularly social housing and affordable housing i mean i've say those as two separate things. Uh, I don't know how this quite fits in there, but uh, um, if if there's not a shortage of, uh, you know, appropriate accommodation, I understand that Moody Park are going to be managing that that area, the, the housing in uh, Creedon Street, yeah. I think if um, uh, maybe, a, a, and we're almost using, the, I, I don't know how much spare land there is if these, Two blocks or this one block that's uh, that's mentioned as being you know suitable mm. for green how um, uh, this uh, green space. And I'm I'm certainly not. Um, oh, I, I remember now. Um, it was it was mentioned that where there is a proposal for additional housing, there has to, green space has to be part of it. So um, that would be. So I don't know how we can whether we can uh, when we're making these um, approaches to government because this recommendation mm. does depend on getting uh, support from the various age. You know agencies and and uh, funding bodies. You know whether we can um, also mention the need for uh, additional um, suitable and and appropriate um, social housing as well. I mean I think we've got to try all fronts to to get mm. those additional housing that we're going to need. I mean the more housing, whatever type of housing we need, is going to re reduce the pressure on on 
on the, the, the housing stock that we've got, you know, and if you're going to be talking about um, uh, extensive uh, remediation of, of uh, lead that's going to you know, if, if it's done properly, it's going to mean uh, probably the demolition of a lot of the current uh, um, places that are, you know, um, rental, uh, rental, um, unsuitable rental properties. I think they would need, uh, if if you they're going to be properly remediated, they would need to be demolished and replaced with other accommodation. I'm just yeah. uh, suggesting this might be an opportunity to do that when we're looking for funds for this to say we also need a bit more housing as well. Yeah. Mayor Kennedy, did you want to um, comment on that? Oh, no, look, it? uh, look it, it's really important that we do. Yeah. Um, and I know um, when we actually meet with Crown Lands and we meet with different people, particularly um, the general manager and I that have met over that time, it's always uh, been pointed out the importance of our social housing when it comes to the native title um, over those lands so the crown lands have dealt with other areas and thankfully they're a little bit more considerate with what's happening mm. in broken hill at the moment so um just if i'm not putting the general manager on the spot if uh through the chair if the general manager would like to just explain a little bit more detail just in case people are at home and councillor brown uh, thank, thank you Thanks, Deputy Mayor, through you. Um, yeah, that's correct, as um, the Mayor was mentioning. So we, when we have been advocating and, and communicating with Crown Lands and um, various ministers and the Department of Planning in that regard, it's been about um, obviously um, how we can work with all the vacant land within the city, as everyone um, is aware, a majority of the land within the city is um, vacant land, is Crown Lands um, and subject to subject to native title and it's about how we can come up with a mutually agreeable outcome um, with native title owners in regards to um, Indigenous land use agreements or how we can actually work um, together in regards to um, putting housing on that land for uh, social, affordable and then obviously putting it out to the market as well. So that those blocks of land are part of that consideration as well. And we're working with Crown Lands in regards to an holistic approach to the city to make sure that we've got that integrated approach um, specifically that we um, looking at it that we're putting um, housing in all in all the aspects of the city but in that particular area there obviously that green um, space that is being proposed um, is earmarked in regards to further expansion to make sure that we've got those um, those areas that line up for the, the purposes of planning. Thanks gentlemen. Um, well, I'd just comment that uh, a few weeks back we did a quick site visit out there and uh, General Manager cooked us a barbecue. Well, we spoke to the um, Indigenous people out there about it all and it went over pretty well. And you, good job. <laughs> uh, now, we've got a move of that. Oh, you've moved that. Uh, all in favour of that motion, as is. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, so item three, Broken Hill City Council Report number 229 slash 22, dated October the 6th, 2022, development application 40 of 2022, proposed hotel development, 207 to slash 213 Argent Street, Broken Hill. Do you have a mover for that? Move motion? that way. Move that way, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you. Seconder. Second that, Mayor Kennedy. Thank you. Can speak on that, Councillor Gallagher? Just quickly, um, Deputy Mayor. Um, it's, going, it's, it's a great, uh, great thing. 52 rooms. It corporates for, um, it caters for corporate transient and also uh, fly in, fly out. Um, it's a big need for Broken Hill to have some more accommodation, especially motel type accommodation. It goes into even dry cleaning and, and cleaning of the place. So you, they're doing a good thing. We're promoting the, the city of Broken Hill regionally, internationally, and um, I can highly recommend and commend this Miss motion. Thanks, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Henry. Oh, yeah, just to agree with uh, Councillor Gallagher as well. Look, what these sort of things do, uh, not just for the, the developers themselves or the owners themselves, it, it instills confidence in the community. As a council, what we have to do is make sure that um, when these things come up, we promote them and do what we can uh, to help, uh, but also let the community know that this council is a council that is for um, development, progressing things in the city. And besides all that, um, 
it is a really in-depth report that um, I would hope that anyone in the community that's interested in it would take the time to actually get a copy of the uh, council business paper just to have a look at it because it really is a good report. And thank you yeah. for the uh, report because uh, there is a lot in it. Thanks, Mayor Kennedy. I'd just like to say I, the um, the photos of the concept of the front now, the, the frontage of the street appeal is absolutely excellent. Um, I think it's a credit to those that have been involved in that and, and done that. I think it's uh, – and to get the extra story in there without a um, another conference centre and an extra 14 rooms is is excellent. So it's a great design in my books. But, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, Councillor Brown. Yeah, just, uh, just, a, just a just a question, really. I think it's a it's a um, a great proposal. Um, just, I, I was interested in the comment about the 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 um, uh, the sub, the um, submission um, against the proposal. You know, mentioned the um, uh, the shading of their solar panels. I was that was really, I suppose it's a general question. I was really interested that. Um, that's not a that's not a reason to uh, to um, object to a, a proposal. I just just wonder whether I mean I suspect it's the business on sort of this side of the application that's that um, yeah. is objecting to this. They they do I know this particular business objects to a lot of council proposals, um, but I. Um, yeah, I was just interested in that. So, that, w would there be any grounds to take the the matter to um, the Land Environment Court? You know, from if, if if they claim that you know this was costing them money with you know the cost of additional uh, um, use of power or something like that. No, uh, the short answer to that would be no, and that's particularly on the basis of if they are granted or if they maintain the normal solar access that is stipulated by law three hours per day that's covered that's the law is it michael just three hours a yeah. day yeah well it, it it's not the law that you must receive that amount but that is a standard that's used and then you, and then from there you make various considerations. Thank you, Warren. Um, all in favour of that motion is moved. Thank you, past unanimous. Thank I, you. I might ask the um, committee just to bear in mind there are three additional conditions that are placed before it, which are over and above what the applicant um, proposed, and they would be issues that um, I've had brief discussions with um, the architect and they're taking those issues on board and I'd assume they will come back with uh, a comment on the night. Right. The, I'm happy to speak through each one of those um, additional conditions. I think that they're, they're justified and particularly having regard to the concessions sought by the applicant, um, they're, they're reasonable as well. Uh, just before you put, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I do agree. I read with them and I think they, their conditions that uh, firewalls and things between buildings and they're things that really need to be addressed. Right. So we should, we should get you to read those through to us, Michael, and then, um, and, and add them to the uh, motion. Would that be, oh, they're in the report. Right, right. Um, so they should be just do they I, need to be added actually, to the... actually I would if you don't if you don't mind, I would uh like a verbal because people yeah, maybe there's not many watching, but it would be would be handy just to uh, go through some of those. Yeah. Um sure. The concessions sought include the number of levels, yeah. um, the height and the reduced uh, car parking on, on site. Um, the additional conditions relate to um, uh, the concession in relation to acknowledging that the car parking, um, the lack of car parking um, is covered off by issues such as providing 
additional local opportunities for travel, either by a, a bike rack and bikes located in one of those parking spaces. It's also proposed that the EV charging station be made available to the public generally. The applicant should actually be uh, commended for providing an EV charging station as part of this. I think that's um, quite uh, innovative as far as that's concerned for Broken Hill at this stage. And also the provision of screens on the balconies um, address a, a, a range of issues. Um, one, uh, screening from the balcony, which will pr also provide some uh, amenity benefits as far as cooling the building, but also screening um, the, the balcony for privacy purposes as well, while also, uh, if they are translucent, having the opportunity to have uh, um, viewing and vistas from those balconies as yeah. well. So each one of those issues we've considered were, were reasonable. Yeah. The other issue that, that hasn't been highlighted very much in, in the report is that the, um, the number of car parking spaces diminished does have regard to, as they indicate, um, a pre preference for bringing people in by plane, by train and by coach. Um, but another measure also has regard to the connection back with the Palace Hotel in that the Palace Hotel is currently going through a review and a redesign of a number of its um, um, hotel options or bedrooms on the second level, where they're actually reducing the number of um, bedrooms uh, by 12 on that level. So that is, is a transfer that could be recognised in the new development as well. Which would be beneficial. Uh, the uh, the other issue, which I think both councillors have mentioned, is the economic stimulus, not only to Broken Hill, um, in a commercial sense, but in an overall community sense as well. That's that can't be underestimated as far as this application is concerned. Yep. Thank you, Michael. The only only question I'd have on that is um, if they were sold off separately, then the car parking wouldn't involve the palace. You know, there would be the lack of car parking because you'd lose those because they wouldn't be the agreement wouldn't be there any longer. That would be the only thing. No, the 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 issues. Um, council makes a decision on the application as it stands yes. at the moment. Yeah. Anything that happens after that yeah. uh, would be considered at that particular time, but it, it doesn't travel with the land because no. the land is um, individual sites. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, so all in favour of that motion is moved. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Item four, Broken Hill City Council Report number 230-22, dated October 7th, 22. Alligator weed in the Menindi Lake system. Uh, do we have a move for that? Yeah, I'll move that. Move, uh, Mayor Kendi. Seconder. Second, uh, Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor Kendi. Can I speak on that? Uh, yeah, it's, so I was contacted by... Uh, a couple of people from Menindi. Uh, and once this weed does get into your uh, river system or lakes, it's very hard to control. Yeah. It's not spread by seed, it's spread by broken um, rhinocytes, the little roots that yeah. break off. So it spreads virtually anywhere it goes and it ends up with uh, roots that are up to 10 or 12 metres long and it just chokes out every other plant. Yeah. It can stop uh, stop oxygenization of the uh, water. So it's a really important thing. And if it is up there, then we need to make sure that the authorities get rid of it as soon as possible. Yep. We don't need that for an excuse why the Menindi Lakes is suddenly dry. No, agree with that. And um, no, nothing to say. Good. Councillor Gallagher. Um, so move that motion as is. Oh, sorry. Sorry, just, Councillor Brown. Again, just a. Uh, a question. I assume that um, Central Darling Shire is uh, aware of this problem. Uh, yes, so they're so it'd be their responsibility, it. or or I think um, the state the state government's actually denying or it. Or DPI water, or, or yeah, what? DPI so, water. Okay, is is there a bad infestation there? I mean, what's, what's uh, well, with the actual situation? Are saying that it's getting so near near the township itself, at, uh, behind the main weir, they reckon it's just about going across part of the river there at some stages. Uh, so that's a, you know, it's a significant mm -hmm. infestation. Uh, below the main weir, there's um, 
different little outcrops of it. So they really need to, um, I think the central darling are aware of it, but uh, the state government's slow walking it yeah. from what I understand. So it'd be just good for us to just, I suppose we, we probably should, once we've done that, contact the central darling or contact the central darling in advance and just say that we um, just yeah. make sure they are aware of yeah. it as well. Could we add that to the um, motion? I'd be happy yeah. to put that yeah. in there. It's only a report that... It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is too. Yeah, that's in there. Yeah. That's fine because I know that uh, Lake Mawala had that problem and they didn't get onto it early enough and they have to drain their lakes and let it and die and then refill them. And, you know, it's, that's a drastic situation, especially out here. And I suspect that could be a way of them, yeah. you know, a good excuse to drain our lakes in yep. the future. Exactly. So we'll move that way. But that way, not uh, unanimous. Thank you. Broken Hill City Council Report number 231-22, date October the 5th, 2022. Minutes of the Friends of the Flora and Fauna of the Barrier Rangers Community Committee meeting held the 13th of September, 22. you have a mover for that? Yep. Uh, move. Mayor Kennedy, seconder. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you. Uh, all in, anybody want to speak on that? Mayor Kennedy, no. All in favour? Thank you, past unanimous. Uh, call for motion to close the to move into a closed session. Uh, motion the meeting be closed to the public in accordance with section 10A slash 2 of the Local Government Act 1993 in order for the confidential matter to be considered. Move that way, move Mayor Kennedy, seconded Councillor Jewett, uh, Councillor Gallagher. <laughs> All in favour. Thank you. 